Excuse that girl. Yes indeed, let's combine the time and I'm feeling fine. Now then, bit of groundwork to cover on this one, so fetch me a hoe and let's friggin' go. So Combiner Wars has pretty much come and gone at this point, and much as I supremely enjoyed it, I really felt like I could have handled it better. I mean, as a fan, it was like an ongoing 26 month super Christmas, with like tons of old fave B-list characters getting sweet new toys, and just the pure joy of building loads of kick-ass massive gestalts. But as a reviewer, God, I hate that word. Can we go again? But as a toy critic, mm, too arch. But as a 30-something glob of bearded white meat given ideas above his station by his moderate popularity on an online video sharing site, mm, too real. But as a reviewer, I totally blew it. I mean, it was just wave after wave of six and seven figure sets to try and keep up with and over explain and crack wise about. And I do this for fun, who needs that kind of pressure? So let's instead hop over to Unite Warriors, the alternative to Kara take on the Combiner Wars onslaught. Not that one. Well, not just that one. Which took Hasbro's handiwork, gave it a mild tweak, and boshed it back out in prestige presentation packs. But as we know on the few show, Combiner Wars didn't always stick so stringently to the established Combiner Boys. So outliers like Skylinks and Cyclonus were assigned definitive teams to get them up to box set standard. Meanwhile, back in the Hasbro hemisphere, there was at some point a creator character multiple choice fan poll thing. Those are always great. Which gave us Victorion, the groundbreaking first ever canon female combiner formed from ever so slightly feminized retools of the same old figures we all had nine of already. But it was still pretty cool, man. I mean, it did attract a certain amount of belly aching from the girls are smelly demographic, but it was kind of an event. Like she had her own comic book with a fresh backstory and it was mostly done fairly tastefully and with a degree of reverence. Where is the enigma? It's mine! Mostly. I said mostly. Which leads me finally to Megatronia. Yes indeed, faced with an entirely new combiner crew without 30 years of built-in marketing blurb, Takara decided on a Decepticon version of the Victorian girl gang and brainlessly recast them as a gaggle of fangirls, heretofore unmentioned accomplices, and actual canonical gender switch duplicates of popular dude characters. And they finally sealed the deal by eloquently rebranding the mighty Torchbear as as the Woman Decepticon Warrior Combiner. Yes, this is canon. <sighs> so now we've established how ridiculous this whole thing is, let's talk about why I love it. It's because I'm shallow. Yes indeed, check out this mean girl squad. Looking crisp and coordinated in some of the slickest paint jobs of the whole combiner thing. I mean, as physical objects, these things are so oversaturated in my brain it shouldn't be possible for me to find them this visually interesting. But come on, these gals be slaying in their single colour semi-pastel realness. And the unified black theming is everything. Anyway, the raddest lasses with the baddest asses rock up in a big sexy box with a big sexy flap and a big sexy window and a sketch of them all playing grab ass in a bathroom. Which is all very respectful and progressive and oh my god. But did you come to me to talk about paperwork? Bring me my girls. Number one. Moonheart. First to the catwalk then is Moonheart, the sweetest sapphire sister copter with the world's most adorable name, who apparently used to work for Soundwave and seems to be the team's general admin assistant. So she's yet another iteration of the Alpha Bravo mold, more specifically the Skyburst girl style version, and as an actual transformer it kind of doesn't get much more basic. Like she's pretty much a standard template robot with some helicopter bits clogging up the back end. But sometimes less is more, like remember Blaze Master? Ugh. But look, we're so deep into the combiner game that it's basically all about looks at this point. And Moonheart certainly is a splendid sight in her irresistible cerulean styles, with a fresh and foxy femme face and like mildly reworked forearms. Check out that inlaid slender sculpting and cheeky arm wings. Legs are looking thick with like the deep ass calves and sort of afterthought robo pumps. But like I think the articulation might be a bit shagged. Like the hips seem a bit clashy here and there and the waist's a bit of a twat to line up. But at least she's accepted with a deceptive badge and a tiny ruby nipple heart glob. And check out this giant pink sword! Ooh, Falcon! is very much an aerial bot update, but instead of the classic thigh shunt there's like this clip lever swivel system that it feels very odd to be talking about like it's new. But I guess we haven't done it on the show, so let's take a look at this wicked world girl. As an actual copter former then, it's really nothing special. Like the robot's still super obvious in there with the arms chilling out on the side like it's not weird. And all you can say about the copter bits is that it's got them. Like the cockpit and the rotor and the tail end are all 
fine. It's just a bit bare minimum. But I mean, I do still like it. Like there's something pleasingly sleek and bullet-like about it, and it just looks so lush in these cornflower colours. I want a Moonheart version of everything. Also, out of all the characters this thing's been, I think it probably suits Moonheart the best. Like it's hardly the most hardcore Hellion. It's always been a bit dweeby for frontline psychopath like Vortex and Blades. But like Moonheart's the uptight dorky one with a clipboard. Of course she hasn't got a Gatling gun. So yes, overplayed and easy mode as her mold may be, Moonheart's just such an absolute charmer. Like everything from her unassuming form and her boring role in the group to her delightful colours and precious name. She's just the queen of my heart. I mean, mosh pits and beer and rocket launchers. Arr. Number two, Luna Club. Moving on then, this is Luna Club, who I'm sure you'll notice is also a helicopter, which I'm tempted to believe was down to a clerical error with that fan Paul asking the same question twice in a row. But whatever the case, Victorian and subsequently Megatrodia were both awkwardly forced to take Combiner Wars to its logical conclusion by including a pair of repaints in the same box. So this peachy princess is apparently the twin sister of Moonheart, which is about all you can do to justify two of the same thing in a five-person team. And I suppose it gives the whole thing a sort of cosy, close-knit family vibe, but it does take the absolute piss. Anyway, little club sandwich here is canonically an obsessive Starscream stalkery superfan, which might not be the cringiest thing in TF lore, but it's up there. She's at least looking feisty with her salmony styles and red hot shutter shades, but aside from that and her little sisterly sapphire being on the other side, she's pretty much identical to Moonheart. So we're done. Number three, Trick Diamond. Now then, introducing Trick Diamond, alleged co-conspirator of Swindle and box-shaped beauty based on the Breakdown bot. Now this is probably my least favourite of the combiner car types. Like I really wasn't a fan of Breakdown or Sunstreaker with their stunted planky arms and dumpy calf clumps, but it does work a little better here. Could be the bonus detail, could be that slimming black, could be that adorable but slightly spooked looking geisha ladybug head bean. But check it out, little Tricky D's definitely looking super badass in this hazardous yellow with a subtle silver midriff and cheeky A cups. Love the open hands there, they've actually all got these and it just gives them that touch more panache over the lad's lump and fist holes. Don't know what that weapon is but it looks expensive. Some kind of jeweled brass leaf mallet shield. Mm. It's all a bit skin deep though, because at its core, this yellow diamond is just a bit of a clod. I mean, she's so bottom heavy and never really looks cool, and the hips just sort of bimble about on this weird little ass axis. Asksis? Still, though, she's definitely a sweet little Deceptor sister, and like the best one of this one. <laughs> Transformation's sort of half interesting, like the top end's very much a standard tuck and flop, but the shins bust out like a neo simul flip and those weird hips just turn it out. And oh baby, the car mode is totally sick. It's just a super badass, hardcore ass, diabolical ass Lambda JJ, with like none of the dumb tampos or weak ass plastic that plague the others. Check out that frantically fierce front end sloping up like a shark. I feel like it's pissed off at me. Wheels are wonderfully free and substantially rolly and the pimp ass rims are just dope as hell. Doesn't sound right with a British voice, does it? So yeah, man, I reckon this little diamond dog's the resident bad bitch, and I reckon I like it. Which is impressive, because this mold's definitely been an underperformer for me. Wow, well, imagine liking something so little you only buy it three times. Which leads me to one of the prettiest modern sports car transformers I've ever seen, with the absolute unqualified stupidest name in the universe. Number four, Flow Spade. Flow Spade? Flow Spade? Oh no, Spade. Yeah, so it turns out these four twisted sisters are apparently named after a deck of cards. Luna Club, Trick Diamond, you get it. And judging by the ninja mask, I'm guessing the flow part is something to do with skillful, stealthy smoothness? At least I hope so. So I guess the name at least came from somewhere sincere, but it just sounds dumb. I can't do anything about it. So anyway, a little Menses trowel here is made with Shockwave or something, and it's the umpteenth iteration of the mercilessly overused but nonetheless marvellous Dead End mold. Which must be nice for Dead End, considering he normally ends up being the repaint rather than spawning an army of them. Seriously, it's getting like the Pink Panther around here. Dead End. 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 What is my life? But in certain cases, too much of a good thing can be an awesome thing. I mean, this is an inescapably sublime little figure. Even like, independent of the whole Combiner Wars thing? Despite having to do four modes, it totally holds its own against any mainline car former. With like, impeccable posability, super satisfying simplicity of form, and just an incorrigible innate confidence. 
A smack and a woman. And Flo Spain's looking exceptionally sharp in her gothy get-up, all dreamy purples and velvety blacks. Not totally sure what the crack is with this boomerang knuckle duster, but she's working it. Love that intricate Vader-esque chest panel and the not Nightbird ninja noggin. And that's another thing, actually. I'm really glad they didn't just do Nightbird, because with that head sculpt and the Decepticon girl theme, they so easily could have. But they didn't. And the girl we got instead is my absolute wafer. Wife. <laughs> Transformation just rolls right out of me, man. I mean, yeah, by now I've done it 400 infinity trillion times, but it still feels good. Like, it's such a smooth operator. All the parts clunk satisfyingly into place, and it feels cleverer than it needs to be. And the car mode's just pure goddamn plastic perfection. This has just gotta be one of the sweetest Transformer car modes I can think of, with its smooth, flowy form and sumptuous, wavy lines. And thank God Flowspeed got to bring the fabulous with the original Dead End Slickmobile, rather than its lumpy over-designed cousin. Reshell? We calling it a reshell? But yes, this thing is no joke, man. It's just hypnotically alive, like an intense amethyst animal with a gleefully wild streak and a body to die for. Chuck in a cheeky bonus hover car mode and I am all yours. And that's all the limb ladies. Now, as a lowly scrub lord westerner, I'm used to my combined clubs coming with a little legend-sized mascot tag-along, but apparently they don't do that in Japan, which is fine, because it'd probably be a groove type, and groove sucks. Which brings us magnificently to... <laughs> Number 5. Mega Empress Introducing the ostentatiously monikered and positively magnetic Mega Empress. The absolute heart and soul of this sweet sister squad built from the iron and energon of Megatron himself or some stupid thing. But honestly, for all the sense these bios make, she might as well be the love child of Louis C.K. and Waluigi. So this hellacious anti-heroine follows the formula of the onslaught hotspot Pyra Magna Bossbot. And as such, she's certainly a commanding presence. Like she cuts a pretty imposing figure with a pleasingly trad blockbot physiology. Like check out these police polygonal shoulder slabs and mighty moon boots. Joints are an absolute joy as well. Like a lot of these ratchets have to bear the strain of the combined mode so they're like hypercharged. She's going nowhere. So for the full femme outfit then, Mega Empress borrows Pyramagna's slimline chest plate with the suggested midriff and subtle Fort Max cameo, as well as a splendidly sympathetic top tier head sculpt with its Astro Valkyrie helmet and triumphant crest. And that face is so sweet and compassionate it's almost impossible to see her as a baddie. That's how they get you. And like there's definitely something about these colours that just instantly lends her a certain gravitas. I don't know if it's like Pavlovian at this point, but for me this colour scheme just oozes authority and pride and a certain relentlessness and she is just serving it up. And I gotta tell you, I'm living for this premium paint job. Like the silvers just shriek in, reds pop out like cheeky blush bombs, and they've even coloured in the goddamn kibble struts. That is luxury. I feel a bit underdressed. Anyway, as a responsible, goal-oriented team leader, Mega Empress comes on with this kick-axe pick-ass. I mean, pick-ass kick-axe. There's something very soul caliber about this, isn't there? Like, it's just so huge and spiky and profoundly threatening that I love that it's called Judge pick -L. Oh, Japan. Never change. So yes, Mega Empress packs in a righteously rambunctious robot mode. Just a shame it's stapled to this round-the-back kibble stack. Dismissive smirk. <laughs> She folds up real fast with a stretch and a squat into a fire truck, kind of. This truck mode really ain't much cop, I'm afraid. Like, I suppose the front end looks kind of neat, and it's a good Voyager size and all that, but it's just a bit bollocks, really. Like, she's packing not one, but two barely concealed faces. She's got her fingers hanging down like a fancy mud flap, and the ladder's more of an ugly scaffold that only really comes to life when you drop the charade and get the face out. Robots in disguise. But come on, it's a combiner. This is like the third most important thing thing she does. She's got a lot on, leave her alone. And that's our star! Mega Empress is just a massively charismatic matriarch, and she scales up just perfectly with her Titans hubby for a perf power couple. And I mean, if we're gonna do a female Megatron, I'd much rather do it like this than like this. Mmm, bleach. Alright, let's do this. All I wanna do is be a good and a giant woman! All I wanna be is someone who gets to see a giant woman All I wanna do is help you turn into a giant woman All I wanna be is someone who gets to see a giant woman 
the combination's nice and doable with the deluxe dudettes busting out these stumpy combiners 2015 style. And it all slots comfortably together with these front and top loading combined of vaginas, which are old news by now, but can I just say... Genius. And with a classic Protectobot ladder noggin reach around, Mega Emperor somehow completely changes colour. Yes indeed, check out this bodacious behemoth. She's a babe. She's a robo-babe. She's friggin' Robert Mugabe-babe. So as the first official Decepticon combine S, Megatronia definitely brings the requisite deluge of raw super robot power and ridiculous camped up showboating, looking stacked and ready to crush in this eruption of volatile neon with this bright pink beef slab of a bod. Head's looking Truly outrageous there with this ridiculous Mardi Gras headdress and giant forehead gem and that breathtaking translucent visor adorning a seriously statuesque lady mush. And is it just me or is that a super secret suggested deceptor sigil? So as per gimmick requirements, the limb friends can do both an arm and a leg and go wherever you want. But we'll keep it vanilla today because how long have you got? So Moonheart and Luna Club are bringing the symmetry there with their bum end rotors peacocking out the top like a pair of disembodied voodoo eyes with like heavy mascara flicks. This is kind Kind of cool though, because normally a Coptobot makes for a fairly messy and weedy arm, but with two of them it actually kind of works. Meanwhile, Diamond Head and Flojo are getting their shins on down there with their car kibble aggressively bunched up the front like some nastily knobbly knees. Anyway, rather than the standard quad changing hand foot guns, Ms. Megs gets a sweet mani pedi with these handsome hands and pointy pumps. The hands are rather charmingly studious with flexible fingers for making pertinent points, pretty much the exact opposite to Computron's brutalist thump cubes. And these fashion forward feeties are actually super useful. Like with the other combiners it's difficult to stop them leaning rather too much on the shelf, but with these you can kind of point the toe and counter count the clumsy clerts. Love the cheeky magenta action stripe there. What is that? W? For Woo Knight Warriors? Or Woman? Or like if she's looking down at it maybe it's M for Megatronia? Or just mmm. Bit of a stretch that one. <laughs> so whichever way you want to set her up, articulation's actually fairly fierce. Like these combiner ratchets are rocking some serious range with monstrous rotators and extreme tilt me doos. So with that and the fresh extremities, she's actually fairly expressive for a combiner. Most of the others are just walking catastrophes, so the fact she can kind of emote is something else, dog. Like me personally, I'm still pretty impressed that every single deluxe can pull off an elbow joint. I'm a simple man. Plus I definitely appreciate the absence of that fifth wheel legends dickhead cluttering up the place. I mean why would you even want to cover up that giant techno love heart? I guess you could be like, groove is in the heart, but like, not worth it. Alright, it's kind of worth it. And as the nicing on the cake, the individual girl's weapons can cluster up into this spectacular Broadway broadsword. Destopia. What, is that where Dezes go to die? Come on, this is just insane with its dazzling pink dual blade and bejazzled copper heart. Like it just cascades late game Final Fantasy fabulosity and I am feeling it. But I think what I love most about Megatronia is this weirdly cohesive colour scheme. Like it's so strikingly chic with each bot representing its individual colours. Trick Diamond's fresh yellow, Luna club's peachy salmon, Mega Empress's cheeky silver crotch, but it's all kind of cemented as one with the consistent heavy black accents. And like you don't even get that power punch of pink until it becomes Megatronia. Like Victorion went for the uniform with the shared colour scheme and I get it, but I feel like this is kind of more meaningful. Like a five way fusion of different personalities pouring their minds and their strength and their faith into each other to form something new that they all need and they all believe in. It says we are all here and we are all this. Right? Am I going too far with this? I just really like it! So yes, Unite Warriors Megatronia absolutely slaps and she's definitely my new favourite combiner of all time. For now. For a bit. I mean, before she came along I was just so done with Combiner Wars and I just don't feel like I need any more combiners ever, 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 amen. But I do leave the combiner phenomenon with much warmer feelings. Like it's just so refreshing and satisfyingly silly and all about the good times. She's just an absurd shock of unfiltered flamboyance in a sea of super serious deceptive blokes. And that's precisely what I need right now. Shantae, you stay. Alright, we did it! We did the Megatronia video! Woohoohoo! See you in eight months! <laughs>